Hello, this is Lucian Byfield from South Australia. Today, I'm going to give my 2017 Formula One season review. Coming in at number five is Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian has finally cracked. Sure, on his day, he is still sublime, strategic, fast, and almost always there as a threat. But there are too many factors that have kept him from top spot on my list. Firstly, he has a teammate on a leash. Yet Kimi Raikkonen has run him very close on occasions, and two of those times he could have won but for team orders and a subsequent drop in pace at Monaco due to depression, I presume. Kimi has ran Sebastian harder than Bottas has run Hamilton overall. And if you think back to 2013, when Alonso and Kimi were at Ferrari, Kimi didn't get anywhere near Alonso. So, looking back to the Adrian Newey Red Bull blown diffuser days, one thing is clear. If Sebastian has the best car, a team supporting him, and a team made in tow, he can do the job. But if his car is not the best, or only the best at certain races, he cracks mentally. Singapore is not as bad as people make out, but Baku was. He should have been banned a few races for that disgusting and potentially injury-causing bit of road rage. And he wasn't even right in the first place. This is a guy who had it all too easy too quickly when he was younger. And with the entitlement syndrome many champions have, he has let it ruin him this year. Fernando Alonso would have won the title in that car, I have no doubt. Sebastian is likeable, funny, charming, when things are going well. But much like Hamilton, when things go wrong, it all goes down the drain. I wish we could have seen Hamilton have a few bad races too this year. Then we really would have seen who was mentally stronger. Sebastian is a top driver. On his day, he is incredible. But this year has tainted him and taken some of the sheen off the legend. He needs to be flawless next year. Coming in at number four is Daniel Ricciardo. Oh, my heart breaks for him, as it did for Mark Webber. There is no doubting the talent. But like Mark... Danny Boy has spent far too many seasons in cars that are not title contenders, despite the recent upturn in fortune. And, of course, at a time when he has a tough teammate too. For Mark, it was Seb. And with Danny, it's Mad Max. Danny is still young enough to find another gear, continue to grow. But Max is already better, and I hate to say it, but he just is. And worse still, Max will continue to grow. Danny may be the best overtaker on the grid. He may have blinding one lap pace, and like a few on the grid, would probably be a champion if in a Mercedes. But his teammate is so strong, if not stronger, in all those areas too. Add to the battle the fact that Max has re-signed for Red Bull Racing, has clearly been treated as the golden-haired future of the team, and will be paid monumentally more than Danny will ever be paid. Hmm, I think you have the makings of a defeated driver for next year. Danny needs to leave. Come on, Ricciardo, get out of there. Don't be another Mark Webber. You know, when Sebastian left for Ferrari, it was a similar situation. You were kicking his butt. You're not going to beat Max. Daniel Ricciardo is not going to beat Max. Not consistently, and he knows it. You can see it in his body language, and especially in his recent qualifying performances. Most of Daniel's success this year has been when Max has had reliability issues. And when they have both finished races... It is usually Max, one step higher on the podium. Oh, Daniel Ricciardo, so much speed, so much talent, ability in traffic. But you are not only up against a tougher, younger, higher paid teammate, you are up against a team who favour him, no matter what they say in the press. I fear for Daniel Ricciardo, he is a brilliant driver, but if he stays at Red Bull, it will be the end of him. He is fourth in my rankings because he is still brilliant, takes any opportunity he can, time and again, and passes like no one else, and still shines so brightly despite never having driven the best car in any season. In position number three, for me, is Lewis Hamilton. Now that will shock some people, because, you know, he's the champion. Now nobody denies, doubts or discounts the magical driving abilities of Lewis Hamilton. He has destroyed Bottas, driven better this year than he has ever done in the past, and truly deserves a fourth title. But there are reasons why he's not possibly as deserving of a god status as his stats suggest. Firstly, he has had the best car, despite him constantly telling us that he has not. 
Secondly, he made sure that he had a poodle for a teammate. I said last year I didn't rate Bottas. I wanted to be wrong, and it almost looked like I was. I might still be, but just like Senna and Schumacher, make no mistake, Hamilton is as political as any of them, and he has thrived with a teammate he does not fear, rate, or respect, despite the platitudes in the press. Oh, he loves Bottas. No aggro, no competition, bar one race. And thirdly, he has had incredible reliability, and Sebastian has had even worse than anything Hamilton claims to have had in the past. When Hamilton has an issue, we never hear the end of it, and the whole world is still being reminded that he lost the championship last year due to mechanical woes. Not his poor starts, or lax races, of course. I could say so much about personality, lifestyle, and out-of-car antics, but I'm not going to go there. I would rather focus on races like Britain, Belgium, and Italy to name but three. Simply, he obliterated anyone on track in a demonstration of a man and a machine in sync like a switch watch with all the parts working perfectly. When Hamilton is in a good place mentally, he is unbeatable. Only Max could maybe challenge him, and just maybe Fernando, but no one else. Hamilton, despite luck and good fortune, has achieved the stats that elevate him to an all-time great. And that he is. If he stays motivated and has a good car, he will win a lot more. But year after year, we see if something goes wrong, he goes off the boil very easily, often for a few races at a time. Okay, in second place for me, for 2017, is Fernando Alonso. Has there ever been a driver who has kept his motivation so intact in such terribly lean years still shone despite not having a position higher than fifth in three years and still being considered by most the best overall and most complete on the grid? Well, the answer is clearly no. Fernando has proven, due to the interest he still generates, controversy, laughs and flashes of brilliance, that he is still a force, both politically and on the racetrack. Now, given a top car, it would be a breeze for Alonso to win regularly and to fight for titles. In 2012, he proved in a Ferrari that was not as good as this year's that he could mount a true title challenge against much stiffer competition. And if you look at Sebastian in the Ferrari this year, he didn't get anywhere near Lewis in the big picture. So that really has to say something about Fernando's abilities. Sadly, his bitching and moaning are a disgraceful part of his repertoire, and I would not hire him if I was in a position to do so. Yes, Honda have been a disgrace, but his comments, radio outbursts, and constant, subtle to blatant attacks are not acceptable, and he is very lucky to be in the sport at all. It is no coincidence that certain teams have no interest in hiring him, despite rating him as one of the top three, if not the best. You can be the prettiest girl in the world, but if you are too high maintenance, no one will stay with you, and this metaphor suits Fernando to a T. He is fortunate that Zac Brown adores him so much. But what happens if the McLaren chassis is not good next year? Fernando will seal his own fate by mouthing off, and he will deserve it if he gets the boot. He is my favourite, has been for years, a truly masterful driver, a character, but severely flawed on the human side relationally. I feel he is this way because, in much the same way that Senna and Schumacher were, he has a severe case of entitlement in the knowledge of how good he really is. 2018 will be it. If the car is good, we will see magic. If not, it will be the end of his career. Number one on my list for 2017, no surprises here, Max Verstappen. Though blighted by unreliability, bad luck and poor results for a good part of the season, it was those few moments that we saw in Japan and Mexico that proved he really is the future, the real deal, has the car control, speed, brain and balls to really take on anyone and in style too. He did not at any point in the season have the best car, and yet still won two commanding races in the dry, and challenged for a couple of others. Sure, Red Bull Racing got stronger towards the end of the year, but where was Daniel Ricciardo? It was him having all the bad luck by then. Oh well, Max was lucky that when he was driving well, the car was really good too. But, you've got to use the momentum, you've got to use the luck, and when he had it, he shone. It only takes a couple of races to show who you really are, and whether it be qualifying or a race, wheel to wheel, thinking, strategizing, you name it, Max, at 20 years of age, has it all covered. He is not as dirty or erratic as he was last year, and he has handled the bad luck way better than both Alonso and Hamilton. 
Max is, for me, the best on the grid right now. And had he been in a Mercedes or Ferrari, he would have wrapped up the title by three-quarter distance. The future looks bright, but we will probably get sick of him very quickly, because he has a temper, he's not immune from being arrogant or forceful, although this year does seem to have tempered him a little bit. When he starts winning regularly, he might just turn into the entitled brat that so many prolific winners do, and with Dad in tow, a real Flavio in his own right, Max will be a force, good, bad and ugly. So, there you have my top 5 for 2017. It may seem like a strange top 5 given the real results of the season, but every year in Formula 1 we see this kind of thing. The problem with Formula 1 is that usually one or two teams are doing the winning, meaning that a stack of good drivers are not getting results. So, the world champion or the prolific winners are not always the best on the grid. It's perception, it's opinion, we all have that. Now, Notable mentions have to be Bottas, Ocon, Raikkonen, Hartley and Force India. Bottas should have been in the top 5, but for most of the season he was nowhere compared to Hamilton. Kimi gets a nod for his two near wins and a pole position. Ocon for clearly being the coming man and for rattling Perez, although we are going to see some Schumacher-esque stuff from him because behind that smile he seems to be of the same brand. Now, Hartley has come in with no fanfare, ego or attitude and made the hyped up Gasly look ordinary. And what about Force India? Wow, with a low budget and true grit they got fourth overall and made it look easy. What about Massa? Will we miss him? Will he be back? I feel really bad for Jolie and Palmer, but this is Formula 1. And what about Kvyat? What a shame. You do not lose talent and speed. It is clearly a mental and an emotional issue. And it is fully understandable given the demotions Red Bull gave him. This year started so well, the promise of a two-team fight all the way, that suddenly fizzled out midway when Hammy got on a roll. Ham on a roll. Anyway, so next year, I think it will be Mercedes again, all the way. But if Bottas can be who he was in Abu Dhabi, then we might have a battle. But I don't think he can sustain that over a full season. Ferrari should be there. McLaren might be the surprise of the year, but I think Red Bull will keep them honest. Realistically, I see Hamilton getting a fifth title, but I hope not. This is Lucian Byfield from South Australia, 